Are you struggling to keep your remote employees engaged at work and motivated? And with the rise of remote work, we're finding that a lot more leaders are saying that it's a bit of a challenge for them to keep those employees who are working from home engaged. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you five strategies that you can use to keep those employees motivated. Hi, if you don't know me, my name is Barika and I am the CEO of Simply Unique Coaching. I have been leading for more than 15 years. I've led more than 18 teams during that time. And I like to say that I am a leader who learned in the trenches. So I want to share with you strategies that are going to help. And yes, I have had remote employees. And yes, I have also had hybrid teams as well. So I want to share with you some of the strategies that I use to be successful, but also that are going to help you to keep those remote employees motivated and happy. And also as a bonus, I'm going to share with you one thing that remote employees wish that their leaders would do that can also help. So the first thing we want to do is to ensure that we have and we create those positive work experiences for the remote employees. So I remember back in the day, I was working in a company that had a large remote team and our remote employees used to have some of the complaints that we see remote employees talking about now, like, why do I have to come into the office? And especially for meetings, like, I think we would have them come in like maybe four times a year for mandatory meetings and they would complain about that. And it's like, okay, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So we want to have a, a positive work environment, but we also need to know when it's just like a, a complaint that we just need to like kind of toss out because it's not an actual complaint. But also I'm going to say on behalf of the remote employees, if there's not an actionable reason that they need to be in the office, then let them work from home, especially if they are productive. So in creating a positive work environment, we want to make sure that we have communication with them and that they are able to communicate with each other and with the other team members so that we can keep things plugging and chugging along. And we also want to get their input and their feedback. So make sure you're meeting with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis so that you can have that one-to-one -one interaction with them to get to know them and to get to know where they're at and to see if they need help with anything. Number two, we want to also make sure that we are encouraging that professional development, give them opportunities to continue to grow. And, you know, just depending on the relationship you have, then you may have to be honest. Like if they want a promotion in the company, a lot of times, at least for us back in the day, we would recommend that they come back into the office because people who are seen, there's a stronger interaction and relationship built when people are together in the same physical space. And so if they want to have a promotion to another area, you may just kind of encourage them like, hey, you can work remotely, but if you want to have a better chance at getting that type of promotion, especially if the majority of the people are working in the office, then you may want to consider coming back into the office because when people see you, they know you, they like you and they trust you, you have a higher chance of getting those promotional roles. And also people can vouch for you because they've seen your work ethic and they can see what you bring to the table and they've seen the interactions with you in person, you know, which you can't really get a good grasp for when you're working online sporadically with people and having to meet with them sporadically. Number three, we want to create a sense of belonging. We want to have a sense of community. So one of the things that I used to do because I had some people that were at home and some people who were in the office or on the campus. So what I would do was I would have those face-to-face -face interactions with the people that I was seeing on a daily basis. And of course, our connections were a bit stronger because we saw each other and their connections with each other were stronger. But I also tried to include as much as possible those who were remote because having those remote people, they can feel kind of like they're on their own island. And some people may like that and they may like it for a period of time, but for a prolonged period of time, it may not actually be the best thing for them but each person has a different personality. So I would try to pair them when possible with people who were in the office. And then I would also try to ensure that I took out time to meet with them as a group, the remote group, so they could have, you know, we have like a little fun time together, maybe have some lunch together and then just talk and have casual time. And even sometimes I would just like open up a meeting or, you know, encourage them, hey, you guys meet with each other to have casual conversation because that is going to help improve the community on your team. And when there is a healthy and positive work environment and your team members are able to have that healthy work environment, they're going to gel more. They're going to support each other more. It's going to be much better and they're going to be happier working together. Also, you want to provide regular feedback and recognition to these employees. So feedback, like I say, I'm a big advocate for providing those one-on-one -on -one conversations and meetings with employees. I think that that is huge. That has helped me. I'm going to tell you that's one of the biggest things that has helped me to have success as a leader is having those individual conversations and getting to know my employees or the team members 
on an individual basis. And the more that you do that and the better you become at doing that, the stronger your team is going to be because A, it gives you a chance to see them as an individual and for them to see you as an individual. And when they see that, then that also helps create a better working relationship between you and the employees. And then it also helps when they have those interactions with each other. So rewards for them and that feedback, give them the rewards that you can and that you're allotted to. But there are a lot of free things. If you say, oh, well, Marika, we don't have a budget in my company for giving them recognition or whatnot, but you can create certificates, you can do lunches together, you can have, you know, there are things that you can do. You have to think outside of the box. If you say that there's no budget for you to show appreciation, I'm going to say, hey, ask them what they need to feel appreciated because what you think they need may not be what they need. You may think they want more money, more money. And actually a while ago, I think sometime last year, I sent a TikTok out and I asked people, I said, hey, if your boss wanted to show their appreciation for you, And let's get the obvious one out the way, you know, like, hey, I want more money. What else would you say? And you will be surprised. Most of the time, it wasn't even the money. And I can guarantee you, like, people want to get paid with their work, you know, want to want to do right by people. You want to get paid with your work, right? Right. Okay. (laughs) So when it comes to them wanting to be able to get and receive recognition and receive positive feedback, or if they need some improvement, getting that feedback, then we want to be able to provide those opportunities for them so that they can continue to grow and get better and that they can also see that we appreciate them and that their team members appreciate them. Just a, just a quick example. So you could even have something where you write a positive note to them just saying, hey, thank you so much for your hard work. I truly appreciate it. A handwritten note. Oh my gosh. They love that. Or if you send them an email, you know, if they're a remote worker, or you can write it down and say, hey, the next time you're in the office, I have, I'm going to send you this, but I wrote it down by hand. But next time you're in the office, I'm going to put it, you know, where you can see it. If they have a little cubby or if they have a little space, you know, do that. All right. And number three, just kind of like what I alluded to before, ask them what motivates them. Flat out ask them. Ask them, hey, if I wanted to show you that I appreciated you or how do you feel appreciated? And you can Kind of go through the love languages. Just omit the physical touch because we can't be physically touching nobody. Nobody. You should not be physically touching anybody. But words of affirmation, acts of service, gifts. I think gifts is one. And then there's another one that I can't remember right now. But if you remember, drop it in the comments. Um, Physical touch is a no, 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 no. (laughs) I can't say that enough. No. But with the other four love languages, you know, you don't necessarily have to say the love language, but you can ask them, you know, what, what would you prefer? If it was words of affirmation, okay, you prefer to have positive praise. Okay, what format would you like it in? Would you like it written or would you like it spoken out in a meeting? Would you like, which one do you prefer? And then find that out. And then that way you're speaking their language of appreciation. I'm not going to call it a love language because we're talking about employees, but you're speaking their language of appreciation. And that is going to speak volumes. That is going to speak volumes. That always will make them think you're the best thing since sliced bread. All right. And for our bonus content. So what is the one thing that remote employees wish that their bosses or leaders would do? It might surprise you. It actually is they want to be kept in the loop. They want to know what's going on. They don't want to feel like they're on that island off by themselves in the middle of the ocean (laughs) from the shore. Right. They don't want to feel like that. They want to feel like they are connected. And I'm telling you, community is a big deal. So In this case, it's more of the communication of things that may be changing that are taking place in the office. Because sometimes, think about it, when people are on campus, there are going to be conversations that they're going to have just because they're passing each other that don't occur when you're remote because you don't really kind of casually pass each other or happen to be like in the break room, you know, and just like, oh, hey there. How are you doing? Oh, and oh, yeah, let me tell you about what's coming down the pipeline. Blah, blah, blah. You just, oh, I'm like, well, thank you for letting me know. And then you just go about your business. You know, it's like a, a two minute conversation, but it was valuable information. But those remote employees don't get that. So it's important for you to be strategic, to build in how you're going to communicate with them. Now, don't overly communicate. Don't give them more communication than they need. You have to balance it out. So you want to give them what they need. But you don't want to call like all these millions of meetings that are unnecessary. Each employee is going to be different. You got to kind of figure out that. But you find those out in those one on one meetings. There are ways and questions you want to ask. And if you're not sure, check out my new leader checklist and go through the list and see if you are on the right track as a leader. There's some other things that I do and teach 
that relate to, you know, what you should do in those one-on-one meetings. So if you have questions to see if you're on the right track as a leader, go ahead and check out my new leader checklist, which is in the description below. And if you have any questions or if you need anything, drop me a comment. If you think that there's something else that I left off this list, let me know, especially if you are a remote leader or if you are a remote employee. All right, guys, with that being said, make it a great day. Take care. Mm -hmm.